Okay, so in 1973, Ursula Le Guin wrote this story called The Ones Who Walk Away from Omelas. And it's basically this short, like, philosophical exploration about, like, ethics and societal responsibilities. And I just wanted to kind of, like, share my thoughts on it. Like, I would have written it down, but sometimes I feel like if I just talk about it, I can get my ideas across a little bit better. So I, I hadn't heard of it until pretty recently. So I, I kind of figure a lot of people aren't really familiar with it, which is crazy because it's so interesting and it's crazy to me that it's not discussed more. So basically, as an overview, it's kind of like a short, like fiction-y thing about this society like way far in the future well some at, at some point in time okay it's about the society and it's basically a a total utopia omelas um there is no crime because there's there's no need to commit any crime there's no poverty there's no ruling class or not even like a government it's just kind of whatever your idea of the perfect society where happiness is totally maximized for everyone and nobody's in want of anything um everyone's just kind of you know for for lack of a better phrase living their best life now um difficult as that might be to imagine just kind of sus suspend your disbelief that a place like that could exist and just imagine if you will that it does now this you know the society sounds like super good and cool and i would probably want to live there and so would a lot of other people but the problem like the crux of the story is that the only way the utopia of omalas can exist is if there is a child locked away in like a basement somewhere and they are kept in like eternal agony like total suffering um for as long as the society exists it could be like thousands of years it could be forever and so the, the only way the society operates is if they're tortured 24 7 like they will never be able to sleep they will never acclimate. They don't get a moment of rest to even think about anything. But in exchange for their suffering, you know, that this uh, ideal society is allowed to exist. And it's not like a, ooh, like it's actually a dystopia because the government is keeping it a secret to like keep power. No, like everybody like knows what's going on. Like it's not a secret. It's like, yeah, we, we've got a kid, like, chained up somewhere, but we have arbitrarily decided that their suffering justifies, like, our, our blissful existence. So uh, the question is, like, is, is a society like that desirable? Would it, would it, be, would it be fair? Would it be worth it? Now, in the, in the story, it says um, that, like, people don't know right away. They, they grow up, and then they're told of it, and they basically have a choice of whether they leave or just, like, accept it. And they're like, yeah, okay, I can live with that. And most, like, every, everyone is initially like, oh, like, uh, what, what the fuck? <laughs> but most of them just say yeah whatever because like why I imagine that you've been living like the the best possible life whatever that is for you and one day when you're like a grown ass adult somebody just comes and and tells you that everything that you have everything that you value and love about your life is hinged upon the total like un in, indescribable agony of this one poor child who did not have a choice in the matter they were they were selected 
for it arbitrarily. If somebody like told that to you, like I uh, personally, I, uh, you know, I, I feel like a lot of people because it, it's like a, you know, it's just a philosophical question. Nothing like that would probably happen ever. So a lot of people would tend to like kind of take the, the moral route, and be like, oh my gosh, I, I, I would, I would walk away. I don't, I don't care if I have to start over. I'll leave my, my life behind because I figured out that this child is suffering because of me. But if, if this were like a real situation, I, I think the book has it, has it right. That I, uh, I doubt very many people at all would walk away because what, what real reason would they have? So when somebody would, would make that choice to accept that, yeah, the suffering is okay because it, it allows us to have this great utopian society, they're basically making what is called a, utili a utilitarian uh, point of view, which is that we should basically take the actions that maximize the amount of happiness for as many people as possible. Like, that's the bottom line. Now, I... I I felt like attracted to uh, utilitarianism for a long time because like, yeah, that, that makes sense. Like we should value happiness and just the fulfillment of life uh, above over like the things like the, the pursuit of wealth or like greedy shit like that. Uh, but like rationally speaking, if you want to create a, a society where like, the majority of people like are are allowed to be happy when what did it follow that like if a country was like 51 percent, everyone was great and good all the time but like 49 percent were like suffering in like poverty and shit forever well that that would be a, a just society if you were a utilitarian like maybe like it's not their ideal but doesn't it technically satisfy the the maxim, you know, to create the greatest amount of happiness for as many people as possible? And if just that 51% is possible, then, you know, it, it is what it is, I guess. <laughs> so that is one route you could take. And many people, like, might not admit it, but I think... And, you know, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think it's it's a choice that that makes sense in a in a selfish way, because okay, l let's say you uh, you take the other option, you you take the moral high ground, and you uh, you put your fist down and say no, I I will not live in the society that is dependent on the suffering of this poor innocent child, and you walk away. Okay. Well, that, that sounds, you know, it sounds good. I think it's a, a good moral position. But what does it mean for you, uh, m materially speaking? Like, uh, you don't even have to imagine, like, you're, you're in a perfect world, necessarily. Just imagine all of the good that is in your life right now. Your best friends, your, your favorite professors, your pets your family, just like the, the simple shit, too, that makes you happy on a daily basis. What if, what if somebody told you that all of that was based on the concept of other people suffering so you can feel good? So if you walk away, you know, good for you, but it, it means you're giving all of that up and going into a, an uncertain and unspecified future that is just objectively going to be worse than how you were living but you know good for you you're you're morally pure now i'm not i'm not i'm not trying to condescend because like i i think it's a position that makes sense from the moral standpoint i'm just saying like for me personally to give up all the good things in my life right now just so i could satisfy my conscience as far as this this child somewhere in the world that i don't know and it's not like it's going to help them because they're they're going to be suffering either way, right? Like I ca I can't like go and visit them and say, 
Hey, buddy. I know you're really going through it right now, but uh, I just want to let you know that I left the society. So I'm not going to be benefiting from your suffering anymore. And they're just like, ah, ah, ah. Like, they're, they're not going to thank you. So your ability to, to feel good about it is entirely based upon you being able to internalize that all on your own, which is, I, I think, you know, a pretty close to impossible thing. If you do take that position, which I think is totally justified, you're, you're making the implicit assumption that what is happening to fuel this society is wrong from like uh, an objective standpoint, like it's just wrong. Like, okay, uh, what, uh, why is it wrong? Why, why is it wrong that this society would, you know, flourish all just for the sacrifice of one person? Like, yeah, it sucks, but look, look at all the good that's come from it. This could not possibly happen from how things were before. So uh, what right do you have to say that actually it's bad? Well, you're going to say, like, well, because it's, it's not fair, you know, this, of, of course it's bad. It's bad in and of itself. The idea of, like, arbitrary suffering, it's, it's wrong. It's wrong because this child has had their, their human autonomy taken away from them. They, they were given no choice in the matter. And they are being made to suffer so other people can can live in, in peace, in harmony. And this this child has a right to make that choice. Okay. Where where does that right come from? Like I, I think, you know, moral common sense tells us that yeah, uh, of course the kid should should have a choice in the matter. Uh, but I I don't see any any real evidence that there is any, like, objective standard of morality in the universe. I, I think that the morals that, that seem objective and common sense to us are, are a result of the society that we grew up in and the shared ideals that we kind of gradually came to accept because we saw that they were what, what was working for us. Like, okay. Uh, let's not kill each other, guys, because, uh, you know, we're not going to be able to make <laughs> any, any babies and stuff, and we're going to, like, fade the fuck away. Like, yeah, makes sense. But if, if you're living in a society where one person's suffering enables literally everyone else to have the perfect ideal life, what, where is the rational moral reasoning to say that that child's suffering is wrong. And there are, there are a couple of uh, interesting ways to respond to this. Like, if you're a Christian, for example, then you may believe that there, there actually is an objective standard of morality in the universe, and it comes from the Word of God. Like, that is what dictates what is right and wrong, ultimately, and so that is how I know that this child's suffering is wrong. If you're not willing to go that route, and you don't think there's an objective uh, moral standard to reality, but you also, like, truly, truly feel that this child's suffering is wrong, uh, you can kind of get into a difficult position, because you can't always articulate exactly why it's wrong you just you kind of know it and it's like why do you know it i i i just do and in my opinion i think it's perfectly fair to say yes i i have my morals because they are rooted in what i believe to to be decency and kindness and sure maybe maybe i don't have a totally rational reason for every single belief that I have, but if I'm guided by the ideals of, you know, happiness and autonomy for people, you know, I, I don't, I don't necessarily feel the need to, to explain myself for that. I think, honestly, the, the responsibility is on other people, if they doubt that, to, to explain to me why it's, why it's wrong. Like, 
you know, you, you could take the position of, well, it, you know, it, it's, it's, it's dumb and foolish to believe in kindness as an inherent good, because if we were just more efficient and weren't so worried about kindness and love and all that, we could have a, a much better society. Well, what, what if I don't want that society? What if that wouldn't be a utopia to me? What if I am comfortable of just accepting that, yes, humans are flawed and irrational, but I, I'm willing to live with that. There, there is no realistic scenario where a society of people could completely abandon the ideas of kindness and love, because I think these things just kind of develop naturally. Like, it, it makes evolutionary sense for us to, to be kind to each other. I think that, honestly, that was one of the reasons that we succeeded as a species, empathy. Like, uh, you know, you see examples of it, but in the animal kingdom, well, uh, the wild animal kingdom, like, y you don't really see lions just being like, ah, you know, I I'm gonna let that gazelle go. You know, I, you know <laughs> he works hard, he has a family to go back to, you know, he, he comes home, his wife is, like, cooking dinner and, like, caring for the kids. He's like, you know, I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him a break. I don't know that any lion has ever gone through that thought process because it, 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 it doesn't make sense to them. They have no concept of that. It, like, <laughs> it's just not going to happen. But we see examples of empathy all the time, every day. Just like holding, holding a door open for a person. Like you, you have just inconvenienced yourself, probably like potentially by a lot. Like, what if another person is right behind them and you feel really awkward, like just stopping and slamming a, a door in someone's face? But you know, you you accept it because you're willing. You're willing to make that sacrifice because. Making other people feel good makes you feel good. And I think that is a, a, a perfectly rational way to live your life. So maybe, maybe, there, maybe there is like an objective standard to reality in some way in terms of morals. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, that, maybe that's satisfactory for you. Personally, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, but on the other hand... Back to the you know the problem of omelas. Uh, if if someone were to pop that question to me, like, okay, this kid is suffering. Are you gonna walk away or just live with it? You know, I I hate to sound like kind of a dick, but I think I speak for a lot of people internally when I say I I think I would say that I can live with it. Like, it sounds really shitty, but, like, with everything that we've discussed so far, doesn't it kind of make sense? If I have no, uh, like, ra like way of rationalizing it to say that it, it doesn't make sense, like, why would I want to give my life up and everything that I love to, to, to pay lip service to this child who's going to be suffering anyway? What, what good does that do anyone? I'm just like, uh, you know, I, I guess kind of virtue signaling to society that yes, I'm better than all of you people and I am gonna just really inconvenience myself to stick it to you guys, yeah. You're gonna be living your wonderful blissful utopia and I'm gonna be fucking starving in the woods, but I'm gonna know I'm a better person than you are. And you know what? You you are a better person than they are. I think, like by by my idea of morality, I, I think that you you would be the the bigger man or woman there. Uh, hashtag feminism. Hashtag uh, gazelle equality in the workplace. Yes, and y you would be totally justified in saying, ah, uh, you know, ah. Uh, you were making some real good sense there earlier when you were saying, yeah, I don't feel the need to justify all of my morals. I, I just implicitly see them as right. And I can't, I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I knew that it depended on the, the agony of this uh, poor individual. 
but what I'm trying to get at is, you know, you're, you're, you're taking a good position there, but I would kind of turn it around on you and say, hey, wait a minute, aren't you already kind of like saying that you would live with it? Like, by the way, that, that, that you live your own life right now. If you're listening to this, uh, all two of you, you're, you're probably, uh, you know, part of the, uh, the American, uh, you know, petty bourgeois class that, that goes to college and can afford, uh, you know, good clothes and you have subscriptions to Spotify, you got Prime, you got Hulu, you got Netflix too, because Hulu wasn't enough, you got everything. Like, you live in comfort. Yeah, maybe it isn't, it isn't, it isn't easy all the time. Like, you, you have your share of problems and they're totally valid and, you know, they're, they're fine. Uh, but everything that is, that is good in your life right now, I think is one way or the other, uh, a result of somewhere, somewhere else in the world suffering for you. So, somewhere in uh, Southeast Asia, there is a, uh, a, a, a kid slaving over the, the shoes that you're going to buy and be shipped over cheaply and mass produced by, uh, or mass distributed by Jeff Bezos. And you're, you're not thinking about that when you buy those shoes. You're just like, fuck yeah, man, I love these shoes. <laughs> like, I, I can live with that. And I think we all, we all know this to some extent, that everything we, we have, especially in, in, uh, in this country, just in the West in general, all of our prosperity is based, uh, first of all, on random draw of the card as far as like material, like good uh, resource uh, conditions, but also because of uh, uh, a centuries-long legacy of brutal imperialism and colonialism and the enslavement of uh, countless millions of innocent minorities who we made to suffer so that we could guarantee the happiness of ourselves and our progeny. I think that that is something that every everyone, particularly, you know, uh, frankly, people like me who are more or less, you know, uh, white, and doing okay financially, that the, the reason that's happening is because of, uh, you know, slavery and colonialism. So uh, by, the, by saying that I can live with that or just ignoring the reality of that, I think we've all kind of already made the decision that we're, we're okay with the idea of other people suffering so that we can live in uh, our ideal world. And the shitty thing is, uh, we're, <laughs> we're not even getting that good of a deal out of it. Like, uh, it was one, one single person in Omelas that was suffering. So everyone, everyone else would have an equally great, uh, you know, just objectively good life. W with how we live right now, it's, uh, Basically, half the world is impoverished, and they don't know when, when they're going to get their next meal, and they, they have no semblance of security financially because it's, it's been denied to them by, uh, you know, the capitalists, the billionaires, uh, and the other half are living, you know, uh, <laughs> shitty lives, you know, that you... you they probably got depression and anxiety and like, yeah, you know, things are good, I guess, relatively, but my life is still shitty. So it, it's, it's even worse. Like, it, like if you were like, honestly, if you were to take the position of saying, yeah, I, I wouldn't live in that society, uh, with that child, I, I wouldn't be able to stand it, the suffering so that, so that I, me, me, me could live a good life. Well, you're, you're doing that right now and you're getting a really shitty deal out of it because it's millions, billions of people suffering for you 
and you don't even get a utopia out of it. Not that I'm saying it, it would even be justified. I, I, I don't think it would be. I don't think it is. So I think that it, that is the, the worrying thing to me. That it's one thing to say, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a good person. I wouldn't allow other people to suffer for me. But that, that is what you do. Every day you make the conscious decision, more or less, to, to ignore the fact that this is happening on a global scale. It's not just one child. It's millions of children. You know, Steve, Steve Jobs uh, becoming, you know, rich off the backs of children making iPhones in sweatshops. Like, uh, is, have we all just decided that that's okay? I don't think that's okay. But yeah, I, like, I have an iPhone. And I don't, I don't feel like I'm just gonna, you know, throw it in the trash and fuck off to the woods for the rest of my life, because I, I, I am a selfish individual, and I, I will readily admit that, and I, I'm definitely not the only one who is uh, selfish in the world, because we've all made that decision to not go fuck off in the woods, because. Uh, you know, I, I hate to say it, but the the rationality there is the same. You know, if you were to say, well, why would I? If I don't know these children and it doesn't really make a difference one way or another, why should I give up everything I have just, just so I can feel better, I guess, for a while? Now, I, I'm not trying to make some uh, heavy-handed case here that actually it's a... It's, it's bad to, uh, to resist things, and everyone should just give up because this is the natural state of things. No, not at all. I, because, like I said, I think the, the correct moral decision, in my mind, would still be to say, yeah, I won't tolerate that. But the thing is, it's, it's one idea to try and take the moral high ground in like some like romantic fictional idea of like this utopia and this one child suffering it's another to come to terms with the fact that you make that choice every day with the lives you live right now so yeah you know set that kid free i guess but if we want to set that kid free doesn't it follow morally that we should we should end the arbitrary suffering in the world right now? Would all the people that said to themselves, yes, I would set the kid free, or uh, not even, uh, sorry, that they would, uh, they would leave. They would leave. They wouldn't leave. Uh, they wouldn't live in that society. They wouldn't be willing to bear it on their conscience. I, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not trying to call you a hypocrite here. I, I'm just saying you you're i think you're not telling the truth there i think you absolutely would i think most everyone would because most everyone already is <laughs> so this is where i think utilitarian fails to answer the moral dilemma because it, if i can't morally justify the idea of one kid suffering so one society a fictional society could you know uh, live in bliss forever why would I be okay with so many millions of, of people in the peripheral countries uh, suffering on slave wage or just actual slavery so that, you know, I can be sitting in front of a desktop with an expensive microphone talking to you right now like a raving madman? Like, uh, why, why, why? Why have we decided that it's okay? You know? <laughs> I mean, even if you do take the utilitarian standpoint and say, yes, maximize happiness for everyone. Well, everyone is fucking depressed, right? Look around. Like, the world is, uh, you know, I, I think people are basically good. Like I said, you know, uh, empathy was uh, an evolutionary trait that benefited us as a species. But things are still really shitty and everyone's unhappy all the time. So it seems like we're not even maximizing happiness. Uh, 
through uh, you know co economic colonialism to the third world, like we're just <laughs> we are making other people suffer so that we can suffer a little less. Meanwhile, meanwhile, like a, a handful of guys at the top are just like laughing all the way to the bank because now they've got the whole world working for them. So it seems to me like we have the the opposite of a utilitarian world where we are we are maximizing misery so as few people as possible can live the best possible lives. I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm missing something. Um, you know, if if at any point you thought, hey, you're you're talking out of your ass right now, and here here's what I can offer. Yes, I I would love to hear your opinions and ideas because I, I think it's a the the problem of omelas and the idea of you know uh, individual sacrifice for the greater good. I think it's a it's a really interesting moral quandary because I think it's a, it's an interesting way of revealing our our implicit biases that we have in real life and coming to terms with the fact that our 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 ideal selves are not our real selves you know what I mean like I you know like I I, I keep on saying like yes I I think it would make sense to say I'm not good with this child's suffering that's your ideal self but your real self is is actually totally cool with children's suffering right uh, millions of children because it, it makes our lives more comfortable I don't know anyways if I were to have a, uh, a thesis statement for for all of this madness it would be that uh, a lot of our problems, like societally, globally, stem from the fact that we have been tricked into the idea of thinking it's it's even possible to live anything close to a moral life because everything that we have is is, uh, is built upon suffering, like objectively. That is how the world currently works. And, you know, we, we get caught up in questions like, oh... Would I let this one child suffer? Or would I live in the ideal society? Oh, oh I don't know. Meanwhile, like, uh, you know, the, the people that actually control our, our politics and our economy are drawing up uh, new ways and new conspiracies to, to make, uh, you know, in-groups of society hate each other more and more, like dividing us up by, uh, by you know, arbitrary and unfair racial and political and cultural lines so that they they can make us uh try and and think that where where our our interests are somehow at odds with the other people in our exact situation just because they're they're different from us slightly like no we we have so much in common and we are we are all so shitty in our own ways but also we are all capable of empathy and i think if people are capable of making the decision philosophically to say i wouldn't be comfortable having that child suffer for me i think maybe just maybe there's a chance that they could make that decision you know uh materially that you know to, to start to question whether the the things in my life are are actually as as good as they're made out to be and it, at least to to view things with a little bit more suspicion you know to to just question whether the the status quo is actually like the natural and, and, and inevitable result of life or if it's something engineered by the the people with the actual wealth and power so that you know they can keep us fighting amongst ourselves over boring philosophical questions while they they couldn't care less because they won folks they've already won so yay so um 
register to vote, I guess. Right, guys? Because that's, that's totally going to make things uh, go back to normal. And normal is good. Everything is going to go back to normal. And normal is good. Uh, quirky, quirky Uncle Joe is gonna make everything better, right? R right, guys? Guys? Uh, right? <laughs>